All right, happy Flash New Day, everybody. Uh, so here's my uh, video. Finally, I'll show you guys how I did that uh, flat panel uh, underneath the window at my place a few weeks ago. I had a few people, uh, quite a few people ask uh, how I did it. Uh, so obviously, uh, this is, uh, I'm always trying to find ways to uh, push the materials to their limit and find new ways of doing things that are either more cost efficient, uh, especially when it's at my own, own house. Um, so basically, I, what I wanted to do is I, I'm underneath each window, I was looking for a uh, as much as possible flat panel. Uh, this is 019 aluminum. So obviously, the 019 aluminum usually comes in a 24 inch roll. So you're limited as to how high or how wide you can go uh, with one single flat surface. And also the 24 inch coil, the, the 019 aluminum, if you put just one panel, usually it'll, it'll oil can like crazy. Um, so what I decided to try and I tried a few weeks ago was to try and make a panel that's almost as seamless as possible. And the way to do this, especially with black aluminum, so that it doesn't oil can, is you gotta let it be free floating and try to almost not fasten it uh, to the surface uh, that it's being installed on. So I'll show you guys how I did it. I had a little bit of outside the box thinking to get to that result. Obviously there's minimal seams uh, in that design. Um, which is uh, completely acceptable to me. Uh, in the end, I'm using material that's costing probably about a dollar fifty Canadian a square foot uh, to do that. Don't get me wrong; the other super expensive material would have maybe be have been even nicer. Uh, but for my own house, I wasn't paying twenty twenty five bucks a square foot uh, for those options. And like I said, there's no fun in doing something without pushing the limits and and finding a way to to make it work. So here's uh, what the solution I came up with is. So basically just on a regular break, um, I bend 019 aluminum in this shape. So you'll see here, there's a male part and a female part, and these are gonna interlock into one another. And then we're gonna crimp them together using a knee straw uh, end cap tool to crimp them in place. So I'll show you guys how I assemble it. Uh, for this one specific window, I needed a uh, panel that was 42 inches wide by 48 inches tall. So what I did is I divided, uh, I wanna have about six inches wide uh, pieces. So I got obviously seven pieces. I made them at five and seven eighths in the front. Uh, and then you always want your male part to be at least an eighth of an inch shorter or a quarter inch than your female part. Because otherwise, if it's too long or bang on, you'll have a hard time lining up the two surfaces. So I'll show you guys how I assemble it. That's the way I do it. If you have any other ideas or techniques that you want to try and improve on that, you know, feel free to share with us. And obviously, that's the only way we can improve. So uh, without that being said, I'll assemble the width at 42 inches, and then we'll have to fold up the ends at 48 inches because. With the sun and stuff, it, it could bend a little bit this way or this way. So by adding a tab that folds down that's hidden in the j trim, that'll help add rigidity to keep a flat surface. And you'll see I didn't fully crimp the uh, female part on the brake because I want to be able to slide it in without five percent. see here what I mean by making it a little bit shorter so there's a gap here so what I'll do before I crimp it I just pull it back flush so I'll flip it upside down on the table and then I just push it starts in the middle push both surfaces tight against the plywood make crimp and we don't need to go crazy on the crimps the uh, the idea is to you know let it move freely uh, I think you know, on this piece, I probably could have gone with four. I'll go with five because I started in the middle. But you'll see now this creates, you know, it's almost seamless. So it's not seamless, but it's it's a cheat. It's a dollar fifty a square foot cheat compared to a twenty twenty five dollar option. Um, so basically, you just keep going like this until you get to the end. So I'll start. Push down, crimp. So you'll see here I did almost a third, a third, a third, so I'll be good with only four crimps. And then when I, 
what this crimp does is it crimps, it kinks the material, kinks the male through the female, so now it's all kind of one piece, it's almost impossible to get apart. We have our 42 inches width assembled. Obviously, you'll see that the uh, it's flimsy, but once it's installed, the we'll light of free flow will be resting on the surface, so everything should light up straight. The um, other thing too, you'll realize that because we're doing a male into a female, if ever there was water going in, it would bring it out down to our J-trim, just like a regular piece of vertical siding. So now this holds up as one, so I'll flip it over so that we can hold our tabs. This is a square. So don't make your tabs more than three quarter inch, or else it won't fit in the j -trim. So I'll just have to trim a few of the panels first. So. And whenever I make times like that, I always like just make it the uh, just on a 45 like that. That makes it easier. You're not fighting, trying to hold it in. In some instances, that doesn't work. For our application of today, that'll be more than enough. I'll actually trim all the angles first, and then I'll be able to have better access to cut the tips. Three more inch after, just like this. Make it more efficient. And I'm gonna need two. Yeah, I like to cut it. Makes it easier to slide in the J if ever it's, let's say, a 16 too long. And would find otherwise if it was straight. So. Covered 
by a flashing key, so it's not critical if it's off a little bit. Spend your time where it goes, where it's worth it, not where it doesn't impact the, the quality or the performance of what you're doing. Again, I'm cutting the bottom under 45 as well. inch pliers, line yourself up on your two corners, and make your bend. I like to apply pressure at the top, this tends to give a straighter bend, but our, like I said on the, the J trim will go in at the minimum three quarter inch, and then the other finished piece will overlap, that's at the top will overlap an inch as well, so even if we're off a little bit, it's not the end of the world, it is to make it look perfect. So that's it for our panel. So now on to installing it underneath the window. Here's the end result we're going with. So we'll show you guys the installation on this one. I put the strapping on the back here to set ourselves straight. And that's where the ribs behind the panel will be sitting at. In the front, I had installed the J trim previously. I like to drill drainage holes to ensure that it, uh, all the water can escape. Because uh, usually I find if you leave water sitting on the bottom and whatever material you're putting at the bottom of your J, I find it tends to... I find the moisture goes up whatever material is inside and uh, dirt and uh, organic stuff tends to start to build up and grow uh, with time. So having drainage holes is good for that. So this house is ICF, uh, so there's no need for uh, any additional finishes. The strapping is strictly there uh, just to do a build up and give us a straight edge and uh, also prevents the uh, aluminum from, because it will expand and move, so it'll prevent the aluminum from squeaking on the foam. Another method, another trick that I like to show is uh, you can use you can use a 19 in, an 18 gauge or 16 gauge finishing nail to nail aluminum to whatever. So I'm always about trying to find many methods. I'll show you guys one of my favorite methods uh, to use two-way tape to hold my aluminum pieces and then they hold exactly where I want them and then I can cut them in place and then this uh, makes it seamless. You don't see any fasteners and it holds up very well on a long term. So now we'll install the panel. Uh, so as you see, I won't, there's no fasteners. I'm not fastening it to anything. I'm just dropping it in place. I'll let it free flow wherever it wants, contract, expand, depending on the season. Uh, you're better off accepting that it'll move as opposed to uh, trying to make it fix and fight it and because that'll, that'll just create oil canning. So the idea is to have it free flow. Don't get me wrong, I don't know if I'd do a, you know, a 10 foot by 10 foot wall with this uh, area, but a, a small section should be more than just fine. And because I'll, I'll be locked into the uh, J's, then we'll be good. So you'll see here, I have it about a quarter inch and maybe three eighths on this side. Um, so everything right now is kind of just resting on the J trim. What I'll do now is I'll make my size of 47, so I'll do one, 47. What I like to do 
for stuff like that, I know that this is my piece at 47. So whenever I have two pieces like that, or even if I'm doing a window for a side, like two sides of a window that are the same length, I'll just fold it like that. So that creates, I don't have to measure twice. And then here I can afford to have an angle. So I just cut the angle and then I got my two pieces by measuring just one piece one time and not having to line up a full cut piece on an actual piece to reset my measurement. So little tricks to, to go faster and be more efficient. So that works very well if you're doing um, window installation, which I used to do by trade. Here, I'll show you guys one of my favorite methods uh, to not have any fasteners. So I use, so this is glazing tape that is used, at least we use it in Canada. I don't know if we use it elsewhere but it's glazing tape that we put between the thermal and the frame of the window so because it's two-way tape i leave a tip on sometimes the plastic rips off so i always leave myself kind of a second option in case it rips off so i don't have to fight for putting it back in so i'll line myself up on the bottom apply just enough pressure Like two way tape here. So I'm obviously not never relying on just the two way tape to hold anything up, although I think it's very strong. All I'm using the two way tape for is to all I'm using the two way tape for is to line up my piece before I cock it. And then, yes, I'll rely on the combination of the caulking and the two-way tape to hold it in place for years. I've been doing this for at least 17 years now. Never had any issues, so it holds my piece in place where I want it. Make sure it's bent nice and tight. Quick change of plan. Um, you'll notice on the first window I did here. Initially, I thought you know it'd be nicer to have a piece that went down an inch, like it did on the side. But because I have less than a probably three eighths, I wasn't able to do that. So I ended up cocking it, uh, which I'm not a big fan. So for this one, we'll try something else. Um, so you know. Bending 3 8 Z flashing up and down can be very tricky. Is I'll make it up out of two pieces. So I'll build in. So this will slide right in like this. So then this assembly will slide right over top. So it almost looks like it's one piece, but it's just assembled together. So I don't know if you can see it here. So it's always a matter of, you know, how can we cheat the eye? How can we do, you know, assemblies to make it look like we did something when in fact it's not really what it is, I guess. Uh, so what I'll do here is I'll put a two-way tape on the back here just to kind of lock it in on those decorative panel. And then once the top piece will be cocked and I'll do a very small piece of caulking, bead of caulking there, so it almost won't show. And then uh, that should uh, cheat the eye. So I'll obviously redo the one on the left hand side to match that one, uh, but I think that'll give a nicer finish and a nicer result. And uh, it just allows to show, you know, another way of doing things that otherwise, you know, most people would say is not possible. I have videos showing how to do a half inch, but when it comes down to a quarter inch, it's almost impossible to do uh, on a break. So sometimes, you know, adding a feature like that allows you to do things that otherwise we think is not plausible. So always try and think outside the box.
is the panel. I'll add so you can see the little piece here that I added compared to that one. So I'll redo that section here to add the same matching piece so it just gives a nice one inch piece all around. So as you've seen here, the that piece is completely floating. Uh, there's nothing holding it up aside from maybe the two-way tape along the back that we've put at the top here. So that allows it to expand and contract as needed. And I've also done this one here. We'll get it out of the sun so we can see it a little bit better. So that's the longest part I've done on is on the side. It's about 11 feet long or 10 and a half. Uh, so I would obviously, that's the limit as to how long I would go uh, without finding a way to fasten it. It's not as, uh, you know, it's 90%. It's not as fantastic as I would like it, uh, but it's uh, more than acceptable in my opinion and works great for, for the cost of it. So I don't know if you can see it better there. It's trying to hide the sun and then all the rest would all be stone and stone everywhere whenever I have time to get that done. Also, I wanted to thank Big Dog Construction. Make sure you follow them on uh, Instagram and uh, Saiga uh, North America as well. Uh, they're the ones that uh, have put this day in place and uh, it's an annual thing. So uh, I'll try and share more ideas uh, before the, uh, the one next year. But uh, I think it's nice to see a group of guys getting together to, uh, you know, try and better the industry and and share ideas and tips and, and how each and every one does it. Uh, doesn't mean that it's the absolute truth, uh, especially for my panel, uh, but I think it's just, um, you know, nice to share ways. And if you have any improvements, any recommendation on what I should do, because I got about 25 other windows to do as well. Uh, so it's easier to touch up those first two windows than uh, to redo something I didn't think of, um, you know, 28 windows later. So anyway, just, uh, Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, any recommendation. I'm all ears.